folks, this is Ayat Raja from InspireRise.com and today we are going to review the U Utopia smartphone. So guys, without wasting much time, let's begin. So this is what the box for the U Utopia looks like. All of the details given on the back, U5050, the model number for the smartphone and other details written on the back price etc written on here battery is a 3000 mAh battery and every other detail written over here you play god Cyanogen mod and free double data on 4G and 3G ATL offer good enough and let's just open this up and see what you get most powerful phone ever so that's a big claim in itself and what do you get inside inside you get the utopia phone let's just take it out inside you get the U utopia smartphone which is a very nice looking smartphone and feels very nice and premium in hand very solid and let's just see what else do you get inside the box so inside the box apart from this you get the house of male earphones we tested this for quite some time and we found out that the sound quality was good not excellent but good and you get a pin for removing the sim tray and a user guide and apart from that a warranty card and what else do you get you get some interchangeable earbuds a micro usb to usb cable and a usb adapter big one usb adapter and you get the house of mali earphones which were inside this so that's what it had inside little bird in ear headphones earphones with microphones house of mali and that's it and that's what you get inside the box for this one the utopia is a 7.2 mm thin smartphone and is considerably light at around 159 grams and it feels really solid in hand and the aluminium magnesium design is very nice the camera bump protruding off from the back is not that much scratch resistant so it does get a few scratches here and there and you have the volume rocker as well as the power button on the right hand side the micro usb port on the bottom fingerprint sensor on the back 3.5 mm jack on the top and you have the sim tray micro sim as well as nano sim dual sim tray on the left hand side of the smartphone and on the internals you have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 octa core chipset which is clocked in at 1.56 gigahertz and a 5.2 inch quad HD display which is really really nice and the viewing angles are really good 4 GB of LPDDR4 RAM 32 gigabytes of internal storage and all of the sensors almost all of the sensors that you might think about and overall it's a nice smartphone and apart from all of this, there is Cyanogen mod on this one, latest variant of the Cyanogen mod software. It's highly customizable and you get a lot of options to customize how your notifications appear in the notification drawer and a lot of other stuff. And the camera on this one is a 21 megapixel f2.2 aperture OIS camera with face detection autofocus and a dual LED dual tone flash. The front camera is a 8 megapixel secondary camera with f2.2 and it has a 1.4 micrometer pixel size images taken from the camera came out pretty clear the 21 megapixel camera does produce good shots in daylight but still the level of clarity that we would come to expect from a 21 megapixel camera is not present it also shoots 4K HD videos at 30 frames per second and 720 videos 720p videos at 120 frames per second Overall, you can see that it's a good camera for the price, not the best in class, but still it's a good camera for the overall price that you pay for this one. And gaming on this device was excellent, phenomenal because of the fact that this smartphone has been touted as a performance smartphone, as a gaming smartphone. When we played Gangstar and when we played a lot of other games, we played Asphalt 8, Airborne and a lot of other games, the performance was really nice, but it was heating up to some extent. On the benchmark, we got a score of 75,963 on the Antutu benchmark, and which indicates that it's a nice score and it's a nice smartphone, not the best in class not the best android smartphone in terms of performance but still very good 1226 on single core score and 3651 on the multi-core score on the geekbench 3 benchmark which is an excellent score by the way and 
we got a score of around 59.2 frames per second on the Nina Mark 2 benchmark which is also another indicative of the great performance for this smartphone and on the Quadrant standard test we got a score of around 29,465 something which is also a very nice score. The speaker grill is on the backhand side of the smartphone and it does get a little bit muffled up when you keep it on a flat surface so that's a slight design flaw and in case we had stereo speakers then it would have been even better proposition maximum volume is loud enough but it's not the loudest in this range switching between open apps wasn't that much of a task and even while scrolling through a lot of lists of applications a huge array of applications then also it was working really fine so guys now we are going to play a 4k hd video on this smartphone and as is visible this is a 4k hd video 2160p and it is at 60 frames per second so it's the maximum quality video that we have and let's just play this one so this one is being played on the hardware codec which means that the smartphone is capable enough to play such a video and let's just move forward so there is no lag whatsoever anywhere in this video being run from the hardware codec 60 fps 4k hd video running fine and looking absolutely stunning on the 2k quad hd display in the settings option we had the usb otg functionality and you had the option to mount the usb storage but when we connected very different types of micro usb storage and micro usb, uh, micro USB otg cables also then also we weren't able to detect the flash drives and storage drives that we inserted into the utopia so this feels like a software issue in this so guys we used the U utopia for more than one week and during the course of our usage we found few things about the smartphone which we would like to share with you the battery life on the smartphone is excellent. It has many power modes for battery life. It has the power mode for efficient battery life, power saver mode and all the way up to the performance mode. So during the course of our usage we found out that in the efficient mode the phone lasted easily more than one day even with heavy usage. And in case you are someone who uses this smartphone very lightly, then you can expect 1.5 to 2 days of battery life with this smartphone. The camera on the smartphone is okay enough, but for the fact that it has a 21 megapixel sensor, few of the images weren't that detailed or that clear, which we would expect from a 21 megapixel sensor. Selfies taken from the front camera was good because of the fact that this is an 8 megapixel front camera and it had good detail when you compare it to the back camera which is nice enough but for the fact that it is a 21 megapixel camera sensor it wasn't that cool. Performance on the Utopia was excellent because of the fact that they have touted it as the world's most fastest smartphone. It was fast, not the fastest but it was really fast. Sometimes the soft keys, the capacitive touch keys wouldn't work. So we guess that's more of a software bug because of the fact that when we were using it in the performance mode all of these issues weren't there. So I guess there's something with the software which needs to be fixed in Cyanogen mod. We played a lot of heavy games on this. We did a lot of surfing on this, a lot of music. Sound quality was also really excellent. It is a phone which is made for multimedia consumption. Talking about the design of the smartphone, the design is really great, really solid, but the phone is really slippery. Uh, in case you don't buy a back or something, it is very dangerous to hold this phone like this because of the fact that it's very slippery and it might slip from your hand. The Utopia has a 2K display and overall color saturation and brightness of the smartphone is nice enough. You also get various modes like night mode which dims the brightness, cuts the blue light and you get an outdoor bright mode which amps up the display brightness to a really maximum possible limit. The fingerprint sensor on the U Utopia is a pressure sensitive one and we have included a short clip to showcase how it works. So we would say that out of 10 times it works flawlessly for around 7 times but you have to perfect the way you use the fingerprint sensor because of the fact that this is a pressure sensitive one. It does learn your fingerprint over time and it does learn how you use your smartphone but still there is a chance for errors in case you don't use it perfectly. A non-pressure based fingerprint sensor would have been much better but still this one works really nice. So the final question that arises is that for a price of around 25k INR, should you buy the U Utopia? So the answer to that would be a mixed answer, a yes or a no, because of the fact that this smartphone right now has software bugs, few software bugs which need to be fixed out, ironed out and then you can use the U Utopia to the full extent. This smartphone is definitely a beast, it has good specifications, 
good battery life, almost everything is good on this one except for the Cyanogen mod which hasn't been implemented to its maximum potential. In case those, of, those few bugs would be fixed out, this smartphone would become the ultimate smartphone in this price range. So guys, this was all for our new Utopia review. In case you like this video, then don't forget to hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. This is Ayatana Shah from InspiredRise.com signing off folks, stay inspired.